In this video, I'll be giving you my fishing impression of the new casting Kestrel MFS bait finesse reel. Now, I know a couple people have said on a couple of my short form videos, hey Jimmy, I thought you didn't like the Kestrel bait finesse reel. That is correct. I did not like the original first release of the Casking Kestrel Elite as well as the Kestrel Bay Finance Reel because those reels were overbraked. This is actually an upgraded version. So if you want to learn more about this reel here, do check out the two videos at the end of this video. There is a unboxing video that will compare the original one as well as my cast testing session. So you definitely want to check those out if you are interested in this reel. For this video, I'll be sharing with you my first and second impression of fishing this reel. The first impression, I actually have taken this reel down to Florida uh, during the iCast show and then I did some fishing with my buddies and it was more casual fishing with a lot of chit chat so I didn't want to use it as a video to portray but I could definitely use it right now as b-rolls as I give you that first impression video. So anyway, I have taken that reel down and I was actually using a different rod. I was using this guy right here and this is my travel rod, one of my favorite travel rods and that is the Bon Voyage. This is the BVC 632 Lite and it's a multi-piece rod which is why I love it. But this rod right here is rated down to 3 grams. It's more of a light plus and I did it on purpose because I want to get down there and I want to be able to haul some of these fish out because we are pond hopping and I want to make sure that I can pull these fish out of those grass and also up the bank a little bit because you know we're down in South Florida. There's gators, so you don't want to be too close, too long to the edge of the water, right? So anyways, this is an amazing rod. And the, for the line, I actually changed it up for my cast testing session. During my cast testing session, I was using the hammer braid, the new hammer braid, and I used the lowest one, and it was still a little bit too thick for this specific reel here. This reel here sports a size 28 millimeter spool, so it's actually better for ultralight and light tackle fishing. And I am throwing light lures, so I prefer to have some thinner line. So I am using a casting Destron six pound test line. I put 150 feet on it only so that I can limit uh, the total weight of spool and, and allows me to cast light lures. Especially with that rod right there, the um, Bone Voyage, it rated down to three grams, but it could still do two grams, but you gotta make sure you have the right amount of line on a spool. Given that this upgraded reel have a lighter spool, you know, I was able to cast some of these light lures that I often do, but it was still a little bit short, but it was A-OK -okay because all the fish pretty much is close to the banks or very close to the edge of the weed line. So I, I was able to cast short distance with the setup, so it was A-OK. -okay. Now the lure I was using while fishing in Florida was the new Z-Man, their Worm Z, and I was using their Micro Finesse Shroom Head 120th ounce. The weight combined for these two guys together is two grams on a dot, which is amazing because I like to have a lure that's in my cast testing arsenal that's at the two point range. So you'll definitely see me use this lure a lot going forward, especially on my cast testing video. Using this lure in South Florida, I was catching multi-species. I was catching bass, peacock bass, my cichlid, and then I also caught a new species, the copper nose bluegill, which is freaking insane. Anyhow, I am now back in New Jersey and we are fishing dog days of summer, which is really, really tough, which is why I love to throw very, very light lures on bait finesse. And this time I'm using a rod that will complement this reel a lot better. And that is this guy right here. This is the Koyin Titan. This is the light tackle one, the TTC 662 light tackle rod. And this rod goes down to two grams. So one gram less than that guy over there, the bone rod. So let's get on the water and see how this fares. And I will follow back at the end of the video and I'll give you my final impression of this reel. All right, dog days of summer, Jimbo likes to fish some tidal creeks areas. You can see that the this drainage area, the water's going out. I actually came a little early because I want to get a spot here. Sometimes right here, woo, it gets packed, especially when the water's coming in, that nice cooler water coming in, flowing in here, cooling down the water, like everything will be congregated right here. And I'm hoping that I will be able to catch some fish. Look, there's a bluegill right there. So um, yeah, this lure here I'm throwing, it's at the two gram mark level, which is insane. This is the new Micro Worms, okay, from Z-Man. And I'm using the Micro Finesse Shroom Jig Head, 120th ounce. Add these two together, two ounce on the dot, which is crazy. And what's really cool about this lure here is that it actually spirals on a drop. You might be able to see it. Uh, it's too shallow, okay, you guys can't see it. But if you were to just lift and drop, it actually darts left and right. But yeah, if you cast this thing out there, you let it fall, free fall, like slack line, it will spiral and it will get some fish to attack. So anyway, um, enough chit chat. I am gonna put this guy here on, um, let's see, let's put two brakes and give it 
cast, and as you see, I backlash like crazy. Okay, so it just shows that, yeah, this thing right here, definitely uh, better. Okay, you can actually use the braking dial now instead of using a zero. So I'm gonna use three, and let's do some casting, and let's do some fishing. That's a good distance right there. Like, I cast it out there very softly. But yep, let's uh, get this thing out there. Let's see if we get some fish to bite. But if they don't bite, I can guarantee you by the time the water comes back in, there will be fish. So I may even jump over there on the other side where the water is going out and I might be able to catch a few fish there too. So let me uh, give a shot here first. Oh, oh, that was a bite. I want to put this reel to the te like fishing test because the other one, other video that I made, right? It was more of a cast testing. Now we need to do some fishability. All right, fishability and true casting. Like, you know, I'm not randomly casting guns for distance. I'm trying to cast like accurately into spots where there may be fish. So sit back, enjoy the show. So let's talk about casting so far. As you guys have seen uh, a few casts so far, right? I would say this thing is definitely a lot easier to cast. Not only casting lighter lures, right? Because it's not overbraked. I feel like when you cast those light lures, it's actually way more accurate. Like I'm able to put in spots where I want it so definitely a nice improvement so they better be releasing this and also discontinuing the the legacy reels because those legacy reels whoo no good at all i mean look at that that's a, a pretty good distance for a two gram lure this is good this is very good oh I, another bite yeah there's a lot of small little dings here and they're, they're nipping all right, I'm gonna cast this out just like that for now. I don't want to get down there and spook anything, but it could be a fish right there. Not yet. All right, get up a little bit more. Oh yeah, there's plenty of fish, but there's a lot of small guys. <laughs> Got him! Got him! Got him! Oh yeah, let me go down now. Now that we know there's fish hiding by the pipes. Ooh, almost slipped on that guy right there. Look at that. Blue gill by the drainage. See, like I said, man, if it fails on that side, you come down here where the water's flowing, you catch fish. Dog days of summer, man. Get to those moving water. Now that I'm this close, I could just dip it in. See what happens. Dip it in. Oh, 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 oh. That was quick. Yeah, they're here. They are here. Dude, this might be the BFS lure of the year for soft plastic. This might be it, man. Oh, no. I got him in the eyeball, but I got him in the eyelid. Okay, I got him in the eyelid. So let me be careful and try to get it out. All right, so I think he'll be okay. He didn't get to his eyeball itself. Well, let me put him back in the water quick. I think my time is going to be up soon. Got to pick up the kiddo. Yeah. I hear you. My time is 4 o'clock. I got to run to... Oh, so. there we go. There we go. Here we go. <laughs> Whee! But yeah, I love this lure here. This new Z-Man Worms. Yeah. And I put it on their 120th ounce jig head and you cast this guy out there, you just let it free fall, slack line. This thing will spiral down and it just get fish to bite. It's freaking crazy. It's that reaction. All right, the next lure I'm gonna throw is the TM code, the Red Pepper Micro. You know, one of the most interesting things to throw in the summertime is actually top water baits. Like, for some reason, when these fish are not really biting like small little stuff in the bottom you just throw a top water lure like this and you move a few times fish will come and they'll congregate and they'll just look underneath it for some reason and sometimes when there's a lot of fish right next to each other oops um that was a bad release but what i'm trying to say is because the fish are pretty competitive they'll strike just for fun or you know because they're pissed off okay or they're like hey it's a good opportunity if i don't eat it first Guess what? Uh, it's my loss. So I'm gonna take this guy, I'm gonna walk it a little bit. This is a interesting pencil style lure that floats, but it doesn't really walk traditionally, right? You can dart it all over the place and it does like more like a bait fish type walk dog. Like it's, it's sporadic, okay, it's sporadic. So let's see 
if I could generate a bite via top water here. Yeah, I can see it. Oh, look at that. Something just came at it. Look, there's a couple of them. Look at that. They're, they're coming at it. And because the rear dips, right, they could bite it right at the hook. But yeah, there's a lot of fish right here right now. Congregated edge. So let's see if we nail one or two top water baits. Because, you know, we all love top water fishing, right? Oh, oh, got one. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. All right. Bluegill. Bluegill, baby. Let me get this out of your face. All right, dude. Off you go. All right, folks. I got the EPS Swim 132nd ounce jig head. I have like no batteries, but I want to show you that I can actually cast this. Look at that. This rod here is actually rated to two grams, but I'm casting a 1.3 gram lure because of this reel here, the Kestrel MSS. With the lighter spool, it's no longer over break, and I'm able to cast this very, very light lure. That's a bite. That's a bite. Oh, shot right behind me, but this is the bomb.com. Hold up. Let's see if I can get this off and catch fish. Man, oh man, dog days of summer in New Jersey is tough. Like, I ran to a couple folks, they were throwing more bigger lures, bass lures, snakehead lures, and they weren't getting any bites. But for me, throwing light lures, whew, catching fish. Heck, I'd rather be in South Florida because with those tropical fish out there, they don't care. With the sun out, very like high in the sky and it's bright, right? They will still bite. Like those cichlids, peacock bass, they'll love small little lures like this guy here, okay? So if you guys are in South Florida, try some bait finesse fishing using small lures like this, and especially this reel right here. Let's talk all about this reel right now, how it's better than the predecessor. So this MFS version, you could definitely cast light lures a lot easier, okay? It's no longer over break. With the lighter spool, you cast lighter lures easier, further, and most importantly, more accurately. And this rod right here is rated down to two grams, but this guy here, it's 1.3 grams, and I have to say it gotta be the real, okay, that, that allows it to cast lighter than what this rod is rated. Obviously, this rod right here probably could do less than the two gram mark, okay, it's probably some rounding, but in order for that to happen too, you need everything kind of in sync, right? So having this reel right here, very light for the spool, allow me to cast this EPS swim at really acceptable distance. Like I probably could do it a little better if I were using a, a similar lens rod on an ultra light because you know, that's what those rods are made for. But on a light tiger rod, I would say that casting distance was pretty good. So yeah, I can't wait for this reel to be on the market because I'm sure a lot of folks, especially casting fans, will want to see this reel on the market. I don't know when they're gonna drop it, but whenever they do drop it, I will update the video description with a link on where you could get this. But uh, for this reel here, I feel like it's gonna be mainly for ultralight and light tackle fishing. Uh, if you guys want to throw heavier lures, like over four grams, I would say you should opt for a reel with a bigger spool. But casting, this is definitely a good reel for the ultralight fishing side, especially if you want a more higher end and more refined from the casting lineup. So there you have it, my casting impression of the new Casking Kestrel Elite MFS. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. I thank you all for watching the Fish Don't Wait. Catch y'all on the next episode.